Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHope2018.com. You know, it really sounds cool, I think, to say that we are in the ark, um, and by that, by, that we are in Christ. However, the safety of the ark inhabitants represent saints preserved through the tribulation period. In Christ, we are gone before the rains even begin. Now, this video is somewhat uh, special, I think, in the sense that, or I'm looking at this video as somewhat special in the sense that we've evolved in our research to the point to where that we are now looking at something that I believe is pretty exciting. Now, I want to begin by saying that the rapture comes with consequences because it, it will set into motion a series of foretold events that cannot be altered or changed. Matthew and Mark state, and many of you are familiar with these passages, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, there are many that take this to mean that there will be a lesser number of days than the days mentioned in Scripture. But that is not what that means. What it means is, is that if those days were to go beyond the exact number of days given, or if time was to continue on as it always has, then no flesh would be saved. That's what the text is saying. The Bible didn't give us the exact number of days. It would not have bothered giving us the exact number of days associated with the tribulation just for God to say, now, look, I know I said a number of days, but that's not really what I really meant. No, that's not the way it works. God's word does not change. Therefore, as I have often stated over the last several years, any timeline must have 2550 days rapture to return. Now, as you can see from the slide on your screen, we were given this exact number of days in Daniel and Revelation. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Daniel 12:11. The original text shows us that the words daily sacrifice literally means that which has continued shall depart. In fact, the word sacrifice is not even there in the original text. It was added by the translators. We can see this in the two words continually and depart. The two words tamid and sur. Now, it is the belief of this ministry and others like it that the living sacrifice mentioned here is us, the church itself, which is confirmed, I believe, by the following verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We are the only living sacrifice today. Romans 12, 1. So it is 1290 days from when the daily sacrifice or that which has continued is taken away or departs and the abomination of desolation is set up midpoint. We know it is set up at the midpoint when the Antichrist defiles the newly rebuilt temple. Daniel 12:11. And it's important to note that we cannot begin this 1290 days at the midpoint because to do so would imply that the abomination of desolation is set up at the end of the timeline when Jesus returns and we know that can't be possible. Another confirmation that something which has continued is taken away or departs in order to kick this whole thing off. We know that the ministry of the two witnesses occurs in the first half of Daniel's 70th week. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 
a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Revelation 11.3 Twelve hundred and sixty days, and then they are killed. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Revelation 11.7 This occurs at the midpoint. The Antichrist has now acquired complete authority to rule, a period of time given him by God. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, Revelation 13, 5, 1260 days. At the end of this 1260 days, our Lord returns bodily to earth the second coming of Christ. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 2 Thessalonians 2.8 Thus the sequence of days has to be 1290 plus 1260 equaling 2550 days. Rapture to return. That's rapture to return. The entire length of days is shown us in Daniel 12.12. 12. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Daniel 12.12. 12. This 1335 day count begins at the midpoint. It covers the last 1260 days of the Antichrist's reign during what is known as the Great Tribulation. And the 75 days beyond it to the beginning of the blessed day, the kingdom, the thousand year reign of Christ on earth. Now my understanding of the purpose for this 75 days can be understood by the statement I made at the beginning of this video. The rapture will set into a motion a series of foretold events that cannot be altered and cannot be changed. One of those events has been revealed to us in Matthew 25, which states, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, this is the second coming, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So there is a sequence of days that can be understood as it regards any prophetic timeline. Now then, before I go any further, I want to review what we have come to know about the sacred number seven, which I believe has relevance to this discussion. Why would seven not be significant when it came to last day's prophecy, when it's all throughout the Bible, where God brought everything to a conclusion, leading to eight, which represents a new beginning? From the start of the Bible, the number seven is identified with something being finished or complete. God rested on the seventh day after creation. Sabbath is the seventh day. The temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Seventy elders were appointed by Moses. Seventy years in captivity in Babylon. Seventy years of Sabbaths kept in captivity. Seventy sevens or 490 years, were determined upon Jerusalem. The prophet Ezekiel was taken by God in vision to Jerusalem to be shown 70 elders of Israel defiling themselves by offering incense to their idols. 70 disciples. 6,000 years man rules, Christ rules for a 1,000 years, equaling 7,000 years animals to be at least seven days old before being used for sacrifice. The command for 
leprous Naaman to bathe in the Jordan River seven times to effect complete cleansing. And the command for Joshua to march around Jericho for seven days and on the seventh day to make seven circuits and for seven priests to blow seven trumpets outside the city walls. Seven pairs of each clean animal on the ark. Seven stems on the tabernacle's lampstand. Seven qualities of the Messiah. Seven signs in John's Gospel. Seven things the Lord hates in Proverbs. Seven parables in Matthew 13. And seven woes in Matthew 23. The letters to the seven churches in Asia. Seven spirits before God's throne. Seven golden lampstands. Seven stars in Christ's right hand. We're told to forgive. Seventy times seven. The number seven is associated with God's judgment, the seven seals, seven trumpet judgments, and seven bowl judgments in the Great Tribulation. In all, the number seven is used in the Bible more than 700 times. More if we count seven, the word sevenfold, or 70, or 700. So, now we get to the good part. Relevant watch time dates. Now, I took the, the time to do several things. One, I wanted to gather together all of the calendar dates that I felt might possibly be in the slightest way significant as it regards a 2018 rapture. And two, I, I wanted to calculate the required 25, 50 days forward from those dates to see where it took me. So the following shows the results of those calculations. Now, some of these dates, I didn't need to calculate anything from, but I'm just showing you all these dates. March 20, Spring Equinox. March 31, April 1, Passover, Christ Crucified, plus the Blue Moon that occurred. April 2, Christ Crucified, actual date 33 CE, on the Hebrew calendar. Now, where you see it says equals zero, that means it didn't go anywhere. April 4, Christ risen, first day of the week, Hebrew calendar. It lands on a Sabbath. May 5, 6,000 years ends. If we, if we look at the creation year as beginning in 3983 BCE, which I believe was the year of, of creation, it lands on a Rosh Chodesh, month 2, day 1. May 12, Aliyah of Messiah, the law of return. May 5, 2025, Creation Day 1, 6,008 years. May 14, Israel turns 70, nothing. May 16 to 17, Israel's Memorial Day, Independence Day. It lands on a Sabbath. This is 25, 50 days forward is where it goes to. It lands on a Sabbath. May 14, the Ascension of Jesus Christ didn't go anywhere. May 21, the law given at Mount Sinai, 2550 days, goes to Israel's 77th birthday. May 21, Pentecost, rapture date on our timeline, same day, Israel's 77th birthday. And of course, we're looking at Enoch being born and taken by God on Pentecost. He goes to Israel's 77th birthday. June 20, the tribulation beginning on our timeline, I, I went 25, 50 days forward from that date. That went really nowhere. So I've got an X there, meaning it, it's really not relevant. May 14, 2025, Israel turns 77. May 14, 2025 is the second coming of Christ on our timeline. I looked at additional Israel dates. April 7, Israel crosses the Red Sea to safety. March 31, 2025. Passover 2018, it's the, it happens to be land on the Passover 2018 date. April 11, Holocaust Remembrance Day 2018, lands on a Sabbath. April 24, 1446, this was the date Israel leaves Ramses, or Ramses lets the people go. Passover Day 4, if you look at it on our calendar this year. April 28, 
Israel crosses the Red Sea safely. It goes to the day after the Red Sea crossing. I looked at all the flood data. May 9, Noah entering the ark. It landed on a Sabbath. May 16, the flood rains begin. It lands on a Sabbath. 40 days, rains 40 days to July 25. There's a partial solar eclipse on that date. July 25, 23, 27. Lands on a Sabbath. Rains cover the earth for 150 days. So you can see how I was looking at every single possible date that I could look at. It lands on the eve of Sukkot. 17th day, 7th month, Ark comes to rest. October 10, 23, 27. You look at that date this year, you count forward 25, 50 days. It's a Sabbath. October 10, 2025 is where that 25, 50 days would end. That day is Tabernacles, day three, seven days after the Day of Atonement on October 2, 16 days after the Feast of Trumpets. By the first day of the first month, 2328, water, the water had dried up. April 11, 2328, lands on a Sabbath. June 5th, 2328, Noah leaves the ark. Month two, day 27. You count forward 25, 50 days. Israel's 70th birthday, May 14. Total days in the ark, this is just a side note, May 9, 2327, to June 5, 2328, one year, 27 days, or 392 days. And June 12, Jerusalem Day, 2550 days forward, takes us nowhere. Now, there's, there's some Sabbaths, there's the Eva Sukkot, um, there's some, there's even Israel's 70th birthday on May 14th. If you look at when Noah leaves the ark, but this flood data deals with Israel. This is why I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the video, it sounds great to say that we're inside the ark, but we're really inside Christ. Those in the ark represent those who are preserved through, through the tribulation period. So I'm not really impressed with anything. But what I am impressed with, and this is what I want you to look at, is I want you to see that what stood out above the rest. When I looked at all of these dates and I counted 25, 50 days forward, what stood out above all the rest was May 21, 2018, its connection to Enoch being born, Enoch being taken, the Torah given at Mount Sinai, and Pentecost to Noah leaving the ark, month two, day 27, Israel turning 77, and the ascension of Christ, because the ascension of Christ, the actual historical date of the ascension, is May 14. So we have these events that are associated with May 21 and May 14. Israel turned 77, May 14. The ascension of Christ, May 14. Noah leaving the ark, Month 2, day 27. It's May 14. So, to me, that's impressive. And it could be said that all seven factors listed above, all seven factors, Enoch born, Enoch taken, the law given at Sinai, Pentecost, Noah leaving the ark, Israel turning 77, and the ascension of Christ, are related to new beginning. The Revelation 12 sign, month 7, year 2017, ended with the number 7. Tribulation period would cover most of the period in between Israel's 70th and 77th birthday. So you, you've got some 7s there. 70 years since Israel's rebirth, May 14 to May 21. From May 14, Israel's 70th birthday to May 21, Pentecost, is 7 days. March 18, 2018, beginning the spiritual new year, 5778 was the 77th day of the year. The year of the flood, 2327, ends with seven. The flood rains begin, month two, day 17 in the year, 2327. 17th day, seventh month, Ark comes to rest. God loves sevens. Ark comes to rest, Tabernacles Day 3. That's seven days after the, the Day of Atonement on October 2. Total days in the Ark, 
one year, 27 days, May 9, 2327 to June 5, 2328. And we know that Lamech lived to be 777 years. April 7, Israel crosses the Red Sea to safety. May 16, slash 17, Israel Memorial Day and Independence Day. So there you have it. This is where our research has evolved as of this date. April 2, 2018, the day that our Lord was crucified on the Hebrew calendar in the year 33 CE. I love you all. I truly do. I hope you've gotten something out of this. I feel really hopeful and, and encouraged by looking at all this. I thank you for all of your kind words of encouragement and support for your continued support of this ministry. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.